Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, help us to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Well, hello, everybody. It's been a few weeks here. It's been a month or so. It's been a year. It has been some time. And now we are in what the church calls the ordered time or the ordinary time. It's no longer Lent. It's no longer Easter. No longer even this amazing gift of Pentecost. But it's just our regular lives. And how do we find God in our regular lives? So I kind of wonder, because the church also celebrates Trinity Sunday today, and that's the image of God in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, or fill in the blank with all the ways that we've experienced God in the most parental or the most dominating or the most almighty figure to the most human, um, relatable person in Jesus to the experience of the Spirit. The experience of wind, where you can't see wind, but you can see the effects of wind, and so you feel this stirring. So all three of those is what we celebrate on this kind of almost like the first week in the regular time in our lives together. Nothing really quite special. In fact, we probably are taking a breath this week, whether it's the end of a school year and what a doozy that was, or whether it's just the beginning months of summer, or maybe now it's CDC guidelines and trying to figure out how to live in this um, restructured way. Do we go back? Do we go forward? What do we do now after this year or so of living in a pandemic and living in a particular way that has been isolated and has been isolating from other people? So this celebration of the Trinity is a big one for us this week, as regular and ordinary as it is. Our lives, the ability for us to live a full life is not an ordinary thing or a regular thing. And I think the church, I mean, I don't think the church knew about the pandemic several uh, decades and generations ago when they had this system of celebrating this rhythm in our liturgy. But definitely there is some insight. After the gift of the Holy Spirit has been given to us and the birth of the church is right here, the question is, now what? And I think our church is pretty smart about this. They don't answer the the how, or maybe they do. They don't answer the who, or maybe they do. Do they answer the who or the how we do church, or we live together? I suppose they do in the Trinity. How do we do this? We do this all together. Even God does this. God is not just the creator. God is not just the most human form come at baby to be crucified. God is not just found in nature or in a stirring. God is all of those things. And also, God is the relationship of all of those things. So if we are made in the image and likeness of God, we too, we too are best found in the relationship with one another and with the relationship that we have with this community of three called the Trinity. So, welcome to Trinity Sunday. I just want to make a few points that stuck out to me in uh, today's readings from Isaiah and from John. Oftentimes, um, people will talk about a spiritual practice of theirs, and whether or not it's like Lectio Divina, where you just pour over a particular reading, a particular lesson, and see what comes up for you, what words or what emotions you glean. So that's a little bit of this. Um, a few of the words and the phrases that came up for me this Sunday that were of particular resonance in the Isaiah passage. In the year that King Uzziah died, I kind of think that's a little important. At the end of that passage, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And then in the passage in John, this phrase caught my attention. He came to Jesus by night, referring to Nicodemus, one of the leaders of the Pharisees, actually, um, leadership in the Jewish community. So he came to Jesus by night. Another uh, prayer practice that I have, in addition to Lectio, is um, trying to actually be in a composition of place. 
I literally try to place myself, I love this passage of Nicodemus, coming to Jesus at night. So many theologians have made this a big thing, like how come he wasn't in the daytime? Like, is there something terrible about this? Is there a transformation happening, you know, because of the nighttime? And all of those could be true. So I put myself in the darkness. I'm in our church Friday evening after the sun has set. And not gonna lie, it's a little creepy. No one has really been here to pray. We've had a few prayer experiences here throughout the pandemic, but just a few that I can count on one hand. We have not been here. I mean, thank you choir. Thank you for our music every week virtually. But we have not all been here together. And when we're all here together, we sometimes hear the creaks and it makes sense and we can hold it. But wow, when I'm here alone, I'm a little terrified. I am, I'll admit it. I'm a little scared of being by myself in a big echoey place that I know is holy and sacred. And I trust that. And I think Nicodemus did too. I don't know if he was afraid. So many people have conjured that maybe he was afraid because he had stature in his Jewish community. And then the first thing he does is, not the first thing, but this story, the first time we meet him, he does seek Jesus and he does refer to Jesus as a rabbi when maybe some of his colleagues wouldn't have. So Nicodemus is this character that I imagine, this person I imagine is a leader who is pretty comfortable with what he knows and comfortable with the practice of debate and questioning in the Jewish community. So it doesn't surprise me that he sought Jesus to ask him a few questions and to pick his brain or to debate even or to wrestle with the things that are not clear. I wonder if you're doing a little bit of that now in the darkness. Maybe that's a little too dramatic, the darkness, but the last 14 or so months, this is our real life, everyone. We will look back at history and say that was a really dramatic moment because it was, and it is. So part of me wanted to acknowledge that today. I think we have been acknowledging it, but let's be real. Pandemic, many of us have experienced loss. There's so much grieving. Even if we haven't lost a person, we lost patterns in our life, we lost a rhythm, we lost one another. Sure, we gained, but I don't wanna be Pollyannish about how these last 14 months have been difficult and have been dark. Glimpses of brilliant light have come too, but amidst the darkness. So if you've had questions, if you've had doubts, if you've had tough things churning in you, you are not alone. So many of us have experienced in this darkness the doubt, even that our faith in the light is totally fine with. I think the gift of darkness or the gift of maybe a little bit of, a, of isolation or feeling alone is that God can break through that and say you're not alone. In fact, look, there's three in one in us, in the God that you believe in. You are never alone. Look at our example. We're constantly in relationship with each other. And so are you with us because you are made in our image and our likeness. God is a they. So I think of Nicodemus, I think of my little practice, and I place myself in the very feeling of curiosity and wonder, too, amidst this fear, knowing that I am safe in this church and safe in my life and safe in my relationship with God, I can test and question. And hopefully then in this space, it'll incubate what I need to do out there in the world with people. Maybe it'll, this, our church experience is a little incubator for how I can be a better bystander, or not a better one, but maybe I'll just be an upstander. Maybe I'll be the person that answers God's call in my community. Here I, here I am, Lord, send me. So the passage in Isaiah is really interesting because the first line, too, is in the time, in the year that King Uzziah died. I don't know about you, but I was totally curious. 
so I can make a generalization that in a moment of transition of leadership, that's the phrase that I want to say before everything had happened. In a moment when there was transition in leadership, what? From my perspective, uncertainty arises. Um, it's a different kind of a practical fear. All those unknowns, um, all those gaps that we try to fill with the to-dos, with the, with the things that we can control. But in the year that King Uzziah died, or in the year of the pandemic, in the year when Julie and Thomas left, in the year that Jen came, in the year, fill in the blank for you. For Isaiah, it was in that year when he lost a friend that he continued to prophesy and he was feeling awful. Didn't feel supported, didn't feel like he had any relationship with anyone of influence to help push, promote God's hope for the world. He has this image. He has this image of God as king ruling an eternal kingdom where all is well. That was his vision. And right when that vision happened, his first reaction was, oh, I am no, oh, I am not good enough. Oh, you can't be calling me God. So it's interesting because when God is about to use Isaiah in a deeper way, he's a lot more aware of his inadequacies, his failures, his frailties. And I wonder if we can relate. Just when we think that there may be, we're on the cusp of God calling us to something, or we've heard something, or we're asked to take on this, this thing, this leadership role, this something. Human reaction may be, oh, well, I don't know, it, I, mean, I mean, sure you can probably find somebody else. Or, really, me? Me? No, me? But it's in that very brokenness that you can recognize God's mercy and God's tender call. Yes, you. God's heart is calling you and you feel it. Yes, you. And so Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, send me. So I wonder, in this season at St. Paul's, when so much is happening amidst another container of global happening, just here in our, in our experience together, how do we fortify and strengthen our image of God that is Trinity? How do we rely on one another and be in relationship? I anticipate we have some opportunities. We will have some opportunities coming this, this fall and this new year together to see each other, to be with each other, to hear from each other, to support each other. And I also wonder, what are you calling us to, Lord? I'm going to ask that in a corporate way. What are you asking of us, St. Paul's, Lord? And let us say, here we are, send us. And perhaps you want to ask that question yourself. What do you want of me, Lord? As we come out of this pandemic, as we come into this new moment of church for us. Blessings to you this week. And happy summer. <laughs>